Hi, welcome back to the channel, you're persistent. Our friends David and Caroline, they went to the Taj Mahal. Russell and Greer, where did they go? They went to Switzerland. And where have we gone? We're going camping. Camping in Nova Scotia. Would you believe it? How old are we? Too old for this. Old enough to know better. Old enough to know better. We've had four hours of rain and Stuart's well over his ankles in water in the dinghy and he's going out to try and empty it. It has been thunder and lightning. Three hours. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. We were anchored where the World War II convoys gathered but nowadays it's just pleasure boats and pleasure bikes. And this is our steed for the next two weeks. Please don't let it rain like it did last week. And this is leading down to our accommodation. You'll find it on booking.com. Five star, courtesy of Decathlon. <laughs> oh, we are too old for this. Norse Cove Campground. Our first night camping for probably 25 years. But look at this for a view. You won't get that in the Four Seasons. <laughs> Good morning. Up bright and early the next morning and heading, I guess it's east. I tend to think it's north and south in Nova Scotia, but it's actually east and west. <laughs> And this is the all-you-can-eat breakfast buffet. Roll on the next hotel. <laughs> Four seasons, here we come. This was about the only off-roading we got on the whole trip, but at least the sun was out. Didn't see many of these. The roads were lovely and quiet. Although in this morning, a little bit wet. And that square building up ahead, that's the hydroelectric that squeezes out all the tidal water from its 14 metre range, making it all foamy. Annapolis Royal, that's two hours after high tide on an eight and a half metre range. Be interesting to see what it looks like when the tide is out. It looks just like this. Imagine trying to moor up against that pier. What sort of length of lines you would need to have. The town provides some inexpensive guest moorings and you can dinghy in and leave your boat down there. And the tide is gushing out all the way to the Bay of Fundy down there at the bottom. Standing. It's apparently the largest uh, original settlement still left in Canada. But who knows, everywhere we go has been the oldest or the most or the whatever. But I do believe this could be the oldest. So that was Annapolis Royal. Time to head off and look for some accommodation for the night. Wonder what that will bring. Editing these videos is always a balance between boring the pants off viewers and letting you have enough time to see the scenery.
we succumbed to the bed and breakfast last night but being hardy campers hardy bikers in the blazing sunshine we thought it appropriate to get the beast back out again the tent that is and for your evening meal <laughs> we have roast beef <laughs> flour à la maison et du beurre <laughs> avec une bouteille de Jean Jambre commentary commentary And that river on the left, that's the Mersey. So, appropriate that we should now go through Liverpool. Five days after the big flood and the river is still running. I could do that. So this is the causeway over to Cape Breton Island. Which means it's not an island, but it's attached by a causeway. Welcome to Cape Breton. This is the ferry crossing. Very short crossing, big long causeway. I think this must be the entrance to the Brass Door Lakes. Another viewpoint. And you can see the damage that's been done there by the rains. But some lovely views. Time to move on. Tick. And here we are in sunny Ingunish. That way is Europe. And our little hut. Not quite as falling down as that one. But is in desperate need of a lick of paint. Not quite sure if the place is falling apart or being put back together. But when the sun's out, it looks quite nice. Off to the bar for evening entertainment. Woohoo! We stopped for a wee refreshment break. <laughs> His bum's sore. So is mine and my legs are stiff. And the fog's coming in for a change. And it's a wee McLeod's lobster jetties. A lovely wee fishing community, but none of them have a shop, or a cafe, or anything. All they ever have is a church. This is Neil's Harbour. Quite near the end of Nova Scotia, of Cape Breton Island and the lighthouse. So we made it up to the northernmost part of our travels, up at the top of Cape Breton overlooking the Gulf of St Lawrence. So that's the campsite away over there at Neat Cove and that's just a hill too far on the bike. It's an unmade up road and that's out into the Atlantic. It was already beginning to drizzle and I didn't fancy much more of that road in the wet so we turned around, headed back down to see what we could find.
So it's raining, so we have to go to the museum just to keep dry. And this is just typical of dozens of harbours that house the lobstering industry. They use some pretty big lobster pots, must have big lobsters. We made our way down the Cabot Trail, it started to clear up, and in the end, we had a lovely evening to pitch the tent. Isn't that a cracking day for a sail? Wouldn't it be nice if we had a wee boat? Yes, but the wind's in the wrong direction. It's on the nose. How do you get back to Boston in that? That's us loaded up again after another incredibly wet night. We can't cook. That's the food lockers to keep the food away from the bears, technically. And the dustbins that are locked and little campsites. And look, a wee, wee bit of blue sky coming through. Prince Edward Island out there in the distance. A nice campground called Linwood. We're in Pictou, Nova Scotia, and I'm standing outside Mrs. McGregor's shortbread. And apparently the shortbread is so good they export it to the UK. However, a packet. $13 and I know it won't be as good as Dawn's shortbread so I didn't buy any. 250 years since the Hector crossed the Atlantic. 200 Highland Scots. In September 1773 200 Highland Scots arrived here aboard the ship Hector. This began the wave of Scottish immigration to Nova Scotia that would last for decades. And some of our friends' clans were well represented back then. Hi guys. Quick view of some flowers for the jeans before we headed off to the campsite. <laughs> now we're feeling a little bit impoverished. As two council public buses turn up towing their jeeps, probably get all of three or four miles to the gallon. But are they happy? It was something like 25 years since we'd last camped, but we saw a picture of our friend Michael from Golden Spirit of Isla out camping on his motorbike and we thought, eh, that looks like fun. Sausages and marshmallows and standing on a table to get dressed when the ground's wet. So, this is Sunday morning and we just had breakfast in Chessie Camp. It was a very nice breakfast and the sun has come out at last because it rained all night last night and the tent's wet in the back of the bike. But it's a beautiful day now to finish the Cabo Trail. And are we having fun? Of course we are. We always have fun. <laughs> and that dock where there's a bar now it's where the ships used to come, load up with apples and other assorted fruits and take them down to Halifax in Boston. Sunset in the Bay of Fundy. It's uh, spring tide, 14.1 metre tonight. I don't think we've got enough chain for that. Wouldn't it be nice if we had a wee boat? Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. We're heading south now, back through Maine to Boston. Give us a thumbs up, tell all your friends, and see you next video.